Hi guys, exciting times. Today we're here to talk about Windows Microsoft's Flight Simulator 2020, which is about to be launched in VR. Let's go. Hello, bonjour, comment ça va? And thank you for joining VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and VR educational entertainment. If it's your first time here to the platform, very nice to meet you. And of course, a huge welcome back to all our regular subscribers, because it's always awesome to have you with us. So very exciting times, because Microsoft are going to be launching their flight simulator across all the various different platforms. At the beginning, it was thought that only HP would have the privilege but now, uh, there you go. If you're a Quest user, a Valve Index user, or whatever kind of PC VR or headset that you may have, you're going to be able to download and play the Microsoft Windows Flight Simulator. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get it for one dollar. That's right, only from one dollar and nothing more if you didn't want to pay more, of course, and also show you how to actually go through the installation process so you can get all nice and ready so that by the time it's VR enabled, you can just jump in there and play play it right away. So you're going to have a couple of options. Option number one, you could just purchase the game so you can own it forever. And there are a couple of different places where you can buy it. Now, the first place, of course, is Steam VR. But I noticed that actually Steam, the price, I mean, perhaps there will be some kind of promotion that's going to happen soon. But at the moment, the price on Steam is actually pretty steep. But the great thing about Steam, however, is if you play for, let's say, less than two weeks and less than two hours gameplay, you can get a refund, which apparently from the Microsoft Store, depending on where you buy it, they don't provide a refund on the game. So that was kind of a shocker when I got to hear about that. So that's something that you may want to factor in. However, if you don't want to actually purchase the game and own it forever because it is pretty steep and you're not sure whether it's right for you or not, then you could definitely rent the game through the subscription of the Xbox Game Pass. The Xbox Game Pass at the moment is only $1 for the first month. So for those who have a PC VR and who have Windows 10, what you can do is first of all, go to the Microsoft Store by typing in your search bar and then go and search for Flight Simulator 2020 by Windows Microsoft. You're going to notice in the search result that there is an option to purchase it with your X Xbox Game Pass. Now the Xbox Game Pass, in case you're not familiar with it, is also an online platform where it hosts a whole bunch of different library games, which some of them of course are enabled for VR. So if you don't want to purchase specific games or you want to have discounts to specific games, then what you can do is you can purchase a subscription to the Xbox Game Pass. Now the Xbox Game Pass for the first month is only one dollar. Now, I'm not quite sure how long this promotion is going to last and whether by the time you get to watch this video, it will no longer be one dollar or how long it's been going on for or whether it's completely normal. But all I know is this, this is really good, especially for those who, let's say, want to download the flight simulator game on their PC. You need to know it's going to take 200 gigabytes of space on your PC. That's a lot of space. The other thing is, if you don't want to keep the game on your computer because for whatever reason you, you know, you played for it with it for maybe a month and then, you know, you're good, you want to move on to something else, then you can just cancel your subscription with the Xbox Pass and basically not have to pay anything more than one dollar. Do go and check out, of course, their terms of sale because depending on the country, you know, it might be different. So do go and check that out. But for me, if I was to cancel it, I would only be paying one dollar. So 30 days of gameplay to me, that's more than enough for now anyway. Now, before you make any purchases, do go to your region settings inside of your Microsoft to make sure that the region is set to the same region as your payment, whatever payment that might be you're going to be using, whether it's PayPal or your credit card, because if the regions don't match between the Microsoft region settings and also your payment regions, you're not going to be able to make your purchase. So when you are in the search result, as I mentioned, you can either purchase the own or you can go through the Xbox Pass subscription way and then you can go through that way. So let me show you how to do that. So when you type inside of the search bar, Microsoft Flight Simulator, you'll notice one of the results has the Xbox logo. So click on that to be redirected to that page. Now, normally what's going to happen is going to load you directly to the Xbox game for PC page. Now, in case you don't have a login or anything like that, 
All you have to do, very simple, just create a username with your email and a password. Make sure your password is strong and just let things go in motion. You may have to go back to emails to verify your account. But once you're there, just log in and then normally you'll see the same page but this time you're gonna have more options. Now on my screen, because I already purchased a subscription, you see a button called manage. Now inside of this manage is where you're gonna be able to manage all your payment things and your games and all this kind of stuff. I'll do a separate video on that. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe so you're part of the notification squad and you don't miss any other video that I will upload to, you know, to the channel in the future. Now, after you've actually clicked on the buy now button, whether it's on this page or it's on the Microsoft store page, it doesn't really matter. It will link and sync everything up anyway. Just, you know, add your payment gateway that's preferred to you. For me, it was PayPal. For you, it might be something different. But once you basically completed your payments, you will be able to see this page. Now, just a tip that only download the app after you have completed your payment. Do not download it before because what happened with me is I actually downloaded the app before I had made my payments and after I made my payments, I couldn't see the download button for the actual Microsoft Flight Simulator game. And I thought, oh, so you mean actually it doesn't come with the $1 subscription? Ah, they got duped. No, 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 that's not at all what happened. Just make sure. So what I did is I completely uninstalled my Xbox Game Pass software from the computer. I then re-downloaded it, reinstalled it, and then I saw the install button. So let's just assume that you either had uninstalled the app and then reinstalled it or you had downloaded it for the very first time. Now open the Xbox game app and you'll see a pop-up will come up on your screen and then just simply search for Flight Simulator. All right, so I just deleted it so that it's a fresh install and we can do this together. So the first thing you're gonna see is a pop-up asking you where you actually want to install it. As I mentioned, you need about 200 gigabytes to install this beast. So make sure you make space and you choose wisely. So after you click on install, there's actually a two install process. The first will be to download the client on your desktop and then you're gonna have to install that client on your desktop again to unwrap the actual game. So you're gonna have basically a bar telling you as to how long it's gonna take for the download to occur there. Now this process doesn't take very long. It takes maybe between five to 15 minutes, depending of course on your internet connection and your computer. So once the actual client has downloaded on your software, now it's time to unwrap it so we can actually run the software on your computer itself. So what's gonna happen after you open it up is it's gonna ask you about your accessibility settings. Just go through each of them one by one. Just make sure that you're comfortable. You can make changes later, so don't worry so much. And you know, once you're, if you don't really know what, what the other does, just go on the internet, do a very quick search just in case. Otherwise, once you're comfortable, just click on the blue next button. What's gonna happen once you click next is basically Windows Microsoft Flight Simulator is now going to download all the content it needs to be able to unwrap it so it can run on your computer. Now, this process took me with an RTX 2070 and a Maximus Hero 11 motherboard. It took a good three hours to unwrap. So don't be so hasty and don't get impatient. Just go and do some other things. All right, so once the content has been unwrapped and downloaded onto your computer, what's gonna happen next is you're gonna go through the graphics settings. So I suggest start off first with the low or the medium settings. You can always change this later on, so don't worry so much. If you know you feel you want to crank up those settings later, then by all means you can do that. And I will be doing a dedicated video as to which graphics may be the most suitable for you. So do be sure you're part of the notification squad by enabling the notification bell after you subscribe so you don't miss that video. Now on the next screen, it's gonna ask you a couple of options. Do read there, take some time to read the information. Basically, one of them is satellite data streaming and then the other, no world streaming. So one is more suitable for those who perhaps don't have such a great network connection versus the other one, which is absolutely normal and the most recommended one. Now, when you click next, there's gonna be a pop-up coming up. Make sure you read all the information to see whether there's anything you want to edit at this moment in time. Otherwise, if you're comfortable, just hit the next button. On the next screen, it's basically gonna tell you that it's detected the following devices so that it will use these devices for you to experience the game. Now, just make sure that at this moment in time, you switch on your Xbox S controller or you switch on any you know other accessories that you might have to make sure that basically the game is gonna recognize these things so you can make use of it 
once you go to the next screen. All right, and the installation process is pretty much almost done. The next screen is going to ask you whether you want to customize certain aspects of the game, you know, anything. If you're an expert in these kind of same things, and perhaps it's going to make much more sense to you than it does to me. I'm just a very novice and beginner at this thing, but I'm so excited to be able to try this with the HP Reverb G2 because the graphics in the G2 are just insane and I absolutely love it. Once you're done, it's going to lead you to the next screen, which is the actual main user interface, the home, if you wish, of the Windows Microsoft Flight Simulation 2020. We will be going through this much more in depth in a future video, so do enable the notification bell after you subscribe. But here, if you're completely novice like me, you could basically choose flight training, which is on the bottom left hand side. And as you can tell, we're inside of the cockpit. You can at the moment I'm using the Xbox S controller on the video. So, you know, panning left and right and then changing my view to being able to see the plane outside. It's absolutely incredible. The graphics are just so amazing. And apparently, according to reports, how it's going to work in VR is that you just plug in your VR headset and it'll all be done automatically. We're no longer going to have to apparently press any buttons or do anything pretty much apparently. Although it's very possible that it will be very similar to Assetta Corsa or Dirt Rally, where, you know, we all Star Wars squadrons, where we may have a VR specific button where we can basically you know adjust the vr graphics i think that's going to be very interesting as well i hope this video was helpful to you guys thank you so much for the love and the support we're almost at 5,000 subscribers you guys are so awesome and also thanks a lot for leaving all your comments do leave them in the comments below so i can give you a shout out in future videos all right see you in the next one ciao